Hello, my name is Kirk Kempton, and today I'd like to make a video for you that does two things. Number one, I'd like to show you the exact recipe for connecting Responsibid to QuickBooks Online using Zapier. And number two, I'd like to help take some of the mystery out of what is going on in Zapier because although it is a very neat consumer friendly app to be able to link things together, its inherent flexibility makes it a little bit complicated if you don't understand exactly how everything is working. So I'm going to help with that. Now the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need to make a Zapier account. So you'll just go to Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com and just create an account. Okay, it uh, doesn't need to be have anything in it, just create the account. Then what you'll do is you'll go into your QuickBooks or Responsibility account and the next thing you'll do is go to your connections area and you'll uh, turn on the Zapier connection. I'm going to delete this, nothing to see here. <laughs> and that's what it'll look like when you come in. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And what we show here is that we have a Zapier account and it is enabled, but we're not doing anything with it. So you'll need to click this link. This is your invite to the beta version of Responsibid's connection into Zapier. So you'll see something like this and you'll go ahead and accept and invite that. And now you'll be at your dashboard. All right, now assuming you have a QuickBooks Online account, you are ready to go. First thing you're gonna do is click on make a new Zap. And when you make a new Zap, the first thing it's gonna ask you is, well, what are you gonna name the Zap? We're gonna call it QuickBooks Connection. Then you'll need to say what app you want to connect with. Now, the trigger is actually going to be Responsibid. So we're going to start typing that, and you want to pick the most current version of Responsibid, not an archived version. And you'll see we are in beta, so click that in. And then the, uh, it's going to say, hey, whenever a bit is updated is when we're going to trigger this fire, or fire this trigger. <laughs> so you click Save and Continue. Okay, now this is where they give us a catch URL and you're gonna just copy that to your clipboard. You're gonna go over to your Responsibit account. You're gonna paste that in there and go ahead and give it a name. This name is only for your reference, so it doesn't have to match. There you go, I already typed it in once. And I'm gonna save it. These don't, again, it doesn't have to match what you have inside of Zapier. This is just so that you understand what connection this is. So now that you've done that, and uh, once it's all saved, all you have to do now is go in here and say, okay, I did this. Now it says, if you haven't, go create a brand new contact. Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go into the dashboard. I will click on Sally Ride, and I'm just gonna open up one of the bids, and I'm just gonna save it. Now by saving this bid, what I'm doing is I'm actually firing off a connection to that, to that step. And so it's gonna catch it, and it might take a second, but once it catches it, it'll tell us, okay, great, I know who this is, and it'll even use that contact to help you with some example information as we go along. Okay, looks like it caught it. Everything's good to go. Uh, keep in mind, that could take up to like two minutes because sometimes the Zap connections can take a little while, but once it gets it, don't, just be patient and it'll get it. Now, we've gotten that. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna do something called add a filter. Okay, so I'm going to add a filter that says the response of bid status for me to create this estimate for this customer. I want the status, so this is the, the thing that it's looking for. And in this example client, you can see that that client was set to scheduled, which is ironic because that's actually what we're looking for. So I'm going to click bid status. You can have exactly or matches or whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. Contains will work, but I'm just going to say exactly matches. And then I'm going to just make sure I understand correctly here. It's capital S and then C-H-E-D-U-L-E-D. -E -E so I'll type that in. Okay, so this means that this trigger will only work if the status is scheduled for that customer. Otherwise, it will not continue the zap. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think you necessarily want a bid or a person within QuickBooks for people who, who aren't moving through your process. Um, nice thing is, is that once you create an estimate in QuickBooks, you can easily turn it into an invoice. But I, unless you want this to be bid status of open or bid status of pending, um, 
your earlier on interactions with a customer will go ahead and fire this off. But scheduled means that this person is definitely booking with us, so QuickBooks is all, not gonna get a bunch of junk data. So they're saying that the zap that I ran, that one customer I saved, would have run given the same test data. However, if we had run a different one that had the status of open, it would have said, hey, just so you know, this zap would not have run if they're open. And that's all good, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna click continue, and now it's saying, what app do you want to connect to? And here it is, big and bold. You could type it in here, start typing in QuickBooks, but since we can see it, I'm just gonna click it, and then I'm gonna say, what do we want to do? Well, the, what we want to do is actually find the customer first. So I'm gonna find the customer, and how are we gonna find them? Well, first, we need to connect to QuickBooks. So I already have my account connected. Yours will just basically have a connect a new account. You'll click on it, it'll take you to the QuickBooks online login, you'll put in your login, and then QuickBooks will say, is it okay for us to connect to Zapier? You go ahead and click yes, and when you get back to your page, it'll look exactly like this. So you just give QuickBooks permission to talk to Zapier, and then we say, great. Next thing we gotta do is search for a customer. Now, you can search for a customer in QuickBooks by their name or by their email, or they give you some other options. The best thing I think is to search by email. So I'm gonna search by email in QuickBooks, and then it says, well, what are we gonna to use to search from Responsibid? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the email address. In this case, we can see that our test person already has an email address in there, and we're gonna go ahead and use that. And it asks us one really important question. If QuickBooks Online doesn't have that customer yet, should we create them? And the answer is yes, we should. That's kind of the beautiful part of all this. So if it says, we're gonna create a customer, how are we gonna do it? Well, it needs a full name by default, so we're gonna go in and put the first name, and then we have to put a space in, and then we're gonna put the last name. All right, so we got the required information. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the other responsive data, even though some of it's even redundant, just to make sure that we put as much data in as possible from responsive so that it's all there and mapped. In this case, Sally Ride wasn't she didn't have a company name, so there's no example, but it still knows that we send over company name. So here's the email. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that email again. Response it doesn't bring over website, but it does bring over phone. Uh, we have street address one. We have street address two, which normally I would think is probably gonna end up being blank. City. Now, city is interesting. Responsibility will actually be sending over city and state. So you can put both of those in there and just ignore the state part and then go right on to zip code. Or postal code for our Canadian friends. And then all of these fields have all been dynamic. Every customer will send over unique information. If you really want to have a country in there, you can just type it in. And instead of putting in a merge field or a dynamic field, it'll just make everybody be from the United States or whatever country you're in. All right, so now what it says is, I'm gonna search by email, I find by Sally at synthesize.com, and if the customer didn't exist, this is all the information I'm gonna send over. And that's exactly what we want. All right, it says, great, this is a successful test, that'll work. So now, we've done a few things. First, a bid got saved, and then we check to make sure that, that bid had the status of scheduled. And then if it did, we went to QuickBooks and looked for a customer by their email address. And if they didn't exist already, we made them. And if they did exist, then we've got them in our control. We, we know who they are. Well, we need to do one more thing, most important thing of all, we need to create another step here where we actually create the estimate. All right, so I save and continue. And it says, is this the QuickBooks Online account? <laughs> Same account, yes, it'll, it'll be there for you already. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to tell Zapier which customer again. And you're like, we already found the customer. Well, we did, but remember, these steps kind of run independent of each other. But we have that information available to us now, so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a custom field. So the custom value at the bottom now we have to provide the customer ID. And that we will be able to search from step three. We're on step four right now, so I go over here, I click on this little plus thing, 
and you can see that it's got step one, which we don't want. Step two is, a, is basically just a filter, so there's not really anything there. And here's step three. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an ID. Now don't worry, if there isn't an ID already for this person, that's okay. Um, we just need to make sure we're under step three or find or create a customer. We're gonna grab the QuickBooks ID. All right, so now we've gotten the QuickBooks ID, and then it says, if empty, QuickBooks will generate an estimate number automatically. Yeah, I don't think we want to type in an estimate number here. So we're gonna leave that blank so that QuickBooks will go ahead and handle that. Keep in mind, this is a little bit of a lie. You cannot have line items. Zapier and QuickBooks only allow you to send over one line item, but we get around it in a pretty beautiful way. All you have to do is from step one, just find the closed or closing price. That is the amount when we schedule the job, how much total we're charging the customer. Well, that kind of stinks because they might have multiple services, but this is how we get around it. Now we go in and we say for the line item description, we're gonna go into step one again, and we're gonna grab the selected services with their prices. Now by grabbing this, we now know that in, a, in an estimate, we're gonna have the amount, we'll have a description that tells us how we got to that amount with what services, and then the line item is actually gonna to have to come from QuickBooks. Now in QuickBooks, you'll have different revenue centers, so you'll just choose one of your revenue centers, in this case, I'll just call it sales, and then the line item quantity, we'll leave that at one, and then any taxes that need to be applied, we'll go ahead and apply via, um, via tax item code that you're using. Um, I'm going to leave expiration date alone and all this other stuff alone, and I'm going to click continue. Now, once you've done this, all you have to do is click on create and continue, and we can see that it successfully worked. All right, so now that we've gotten through all the steps, now we need to test out this connection to QuickBooks. So the way we're going to do it is first I'm going to go over to the dashboard and I'm going to turn on the zap. All right, the zap is active and ready to go. And if I go over to response bid and I go into a customer and I change their status to scheduled, I would go through the normal scheduling process. So I scheduled this customer for a deluxe carpet cleaning, a deluxe window cleaning, and I'll schedule them for a date in the future. Choose the time. And you can see that now I'm able to book the job. Now, when I booked that, if you went to the Zapier uh, page, you actually can click on a little down arrow and actually see the history. Every time a task is fired off, it goes through here and actually makes a connection. And you can see that this one, I ran a bid and it wasn't scheduled, so it actually didn't go through. And that was the open bid. But if I go back and I wait for a minute or two, you can see that it tried to run it and it went pending, but it didn't quite make it. So it actually tried again. And when we click here, we can actually even see the whole process. It found the contact response bid. It passed the filter as a scheduled customer. So it went into QuickBooks Online and it found or created the person. And then it made an estimate and put it in QuickBooks Online. So let's go check it out in QuickBooks Online. All right, so here we are in QuickBooks Online. And you'll notice that when I click on the History tab at the top, there's Frankie Stallone. And you can see that Frankie Stallone not only has his information all entered in, anything that we did know about him, but you can also see that there's the line item for sales, whatever the product or service that you linked QuickBooks to will be there. And then the description, there's the service, the package level, and the price all individually put within our own line items that we had to spe specify. And we took care of that magic for you, even though we can't uh, Zapier won't let us make additional lines inside of QuickBooks. And then you can see there's the total price or the quantity of one. So at this point, the estimate's ready to go. When we're ready to make an invoice, we just click copy to invoice. If for whatever reason you need to delete the invoice, you just click on delete and it's gone. And your life is very easy. You schedule the bid inside of Responsive Bid. You show up over in QuickBooks, make any edits that you might need to make inside of the actual estimate. When you're ready to fire it off as an invoice, you take care of it that way, just like you normally would inside of your normal QuickBooks workflow. I hope that helps. We definitely hope it saves you a ton of time, and I hope that some of the mystery of Zapier has all been taken away, and you will be brave enough to maybe try some other zaps to other software you might use.